If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question before listening on. We have the picture of the initial scenario, but in order to solve this question, we want to draw the final scenario as well. So after the block falls and compresses the spring, it comes to rest. We can see from the picture that it compresses the spring by an amount that we can call x. What we need to do is explore the types of energy that are present initially and also finally. Initially, the block is at rest, the spring is relaxed, so the only energy that's present would be the gravitational potential energy, which of course is equal to mg times a height. We can see from the diagram that overall the block falls a height of h plus x. You might want to pause the video and make sure that makes sense, but from where it starts to where it ends, it descends a distance of h and then also plus that x. So we're going to fill in h plus x in for the height of the block. In the final scenario, the block comes to rest. It's no longer at a given height, so the gravitational potential energy is now zero. The only energy present would be the spring potential energy, which we know would equal the following expression here. Through the conservation of energy, we can set the final energy equal to the initial energy. We recall the question is asking us for the maximum distance that the spring is compressed, so we're basically being asked to solve for x. To do that, we can go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 2. We can then distribute the 2mg into the parentheses. And then since this is a quadratic equation, we need to set it equal to 0, so let's subtract the two terms on the right over to the left side. We'll now have to use the quadratic formula to solve for x. Note that the a would be k, the b value would be the term in front of x, so we have negative 2mg, and then c would be this term right here. We've got the quadratic formula set up here. You might want to pause the video to make sure it makes sense. At this point, we can just plug in all the known values. Just note that the height, h, is given in centimeters, so we're going to have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 2 to convert it to the standard unit of meters. And when you simplify that carefully on your calculator, you should get two values. One value turns out to be 0.1 meters, and the other value is negative 0.08 meters. We will keep only the positive root for our answer, so we can reject the negative root. And the answer, therefore, becomes 0 0.10 meters. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You're welcome to send your question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.